Before we get started, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit the like if you do like the content. It really helps the algorithm and helps the channel grow. There's lots of ways to support. There's becoming a channel member, becoming part of the Horde family, and then the extended family on Patreon. You could even give me a super thanks right now. Generating revenue is how I pay my voice actors and continue doing what I'm doing. Now, without further ado, here we go. Previously, in The Stand. Two months ago, something happened at Project Blue in California. Within weeks, a flu-like virus, Captain Trips, swept through the world, killing 99% of the population. Now it's up to the survivors to piece together a new life in a world that has moved on. Three ragtag groups have started to pick their way west. Nick Andros, a deaf mute who lost his eye during the last gasping throes of Captain Trips, has met up with Abigail Fremantle, a 108-year-old woman in Nebraska, where him and Ralph Brantner, Dick Ellis, and the man-child Tom Collin, with half a dozen others, and all together, they are heading to Colorado. Franny Goldsmith and Harold Lautner have connected with Glenn Bateman and Stu Redman, and they too are making their way to Nebraska to meet up with the woman they've come to know in their dreams as Mother Abigail. However, tension is brewing in the group, as Stu and Franny have struck up a romance, much to the chagrin of Harold. Larry Underwood traveled alone for a while until he met up with Nadine Cross and a boy, Joe, who doesn't speak. They have met others, and they are following a dream of an old woman in a shack in Nebraska. It is a dream they all share, all of them, except Nadine. There is another force drawing the survivors to him, to Las Vegas, and he goes by many names. The Dark Man, Randall Flagg, The Hard Case. No one knows where he came from, but everyone, even his allies, fear him. The pieces are all being moved into place, but to what end? No one knows. The man who was once Donald Merwin Elbert, now trash can man forever and ever, beheld the fabled city, seven and one. Cibola, the city that is promised, the city of dreams. I'm coming. I'll do whatever you want. My life for you. His body a broken burnt wreck, as mad as a hatter from walking through God's frying pan with no rest and no water. Trashy began to dance. Cibola, Cibola, bumpity bump. Tonight, he thought, he would drink from the waters of Chibola, and they would taste like wine, and then he would find him, the man who would bait him across the plains of mountains and finally into the desert, he who is the dark man, the hard case. His were the armies of the night, his were the white-faced riders of the dead. Soon, there would be things Trashcan cared for very little. Shrieks and rapes, subjugation and murder. I will set you high in my artillery. You are the man I want. But also very soon, there would be a great burning. And about that, Trashcan cared very much. Cibola. The first dream had come to Trashcan Man in Gary, Indiana. After a mishap, blowing up the town's oil tanks left him unconscious. There had been a blinding white flare. Then agony as though he'd thrust his arm into an active volcano, churning lava. He made it off of the tank in one piece, barely, falling part of the way and landing on his arm, smothering the flames. As he lost consciousness, he murmured, Live by the torch. Die by the... When the dark man came to him, Trashy thought he had seen him before. When the townies back in Poutonville catcalled at him, when the sheriff had sent him to the nut hatch, all his life, stoking the fire inside him that was never going to go out. His was the face you could never quite see. His were the hands that dealt spades from the death deck. His was the grin from beyond the grave of the world. 
The Dark Man showed trashy in America in flames, and a rough beast of an army, 10,000 raggle taggle castoffs, driving east into the mountains, with him riding atop a truck filled with jellied napalm. Each person wore a dark stone about his or her neck, and in some of them was a red shape that might have been an eye or a key. I'll do whatever you want. I will set you to burn. You must come west to my city beyond the mountains, and all will be made clear to you. Trashy woke up then, and all around him, Gary was burning. It reminded him of a classic funny book he had owned as a child, an adaptation of H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds. No time to waste, now that he had purpose. Trashy needed to move. And when he saw a few other survivors stumbling out of Gary, he thought, Fools, in good time, you'll burn. On July 4th, the day Larry Underwood discovered Rita Blakemore had overdosed, Trash Can Man began riding at 10 speed. He fell off twice the first day, once squarely on his burn, which he slathered in Vaseline and antiseptic to ward off gangrene. On July 8th, the day Nick and Tom saw buffalo grazing in Comanche country, Trash Can Man crossed the Mississippi into Iowa. On the 14th, he crossed the Missouri. And, for the first time since Gary, Trash suspected God himself might intervene between him and his destiny. He was in Nebraska, and there was something dreadfully wrong. In Nebraska, at night, the Dark Man, his constant companion since Indiana, came to him no more. Instead, he began to dream about an old woman? Singing songs Trashly vaguely knew. Songs the mother of a boy named Donald Merwin Elbert used to sing while doing her housework. He had peered at her, paralyzed with hate and fear, because all of a sudden, the woman would stop singing and weasel in the corn, and he would look down to see, ah! and then he would scream himself awake. Oh, please get me away from her. I don't want no part of that. Oh, bitty, please. Oh, please get me out of Nebraska. Which is how Trash Can Man ended up crossing 400 miles in three days, running mostly on high-octane terror. For Mother Abigail's part, she awoke during the night of July 15th, just as Trash Can Man passed north of Hemingford Home, full of fear and pity. She thought she might have been dreaming about her grandson Andre, who'd been killed in a hunting accident when he was six. On July 18th, southwest of Sterling, Colorado, a 32 Ford Deuce Coupe screeched to a halt right next to Trashy on Highway 34. It and its driver were a sight to behold. Hey, you all tall and ugly. Hey, boy, what y'all say? The only thing Trash Can could think of was, I like your car. It was, perhaps, the only right thing to say. Five minutes later, Trashy was riding shotgun as the dupe coupe accelerated to the kid's cruising speed, 95 miles per hour. They call me the kid. Out of Streetport, Louisiana. This here beast won every major car show award in the South. You believe that happy crappy? What they call you, boy? The trash can man. So I used to light fires in people's trash cans and mailboxes and stuff. Did you? Boy, you sound crazy. That's all right. I like crazy people. I'm crazy myself. Almost as if to prove a point, they whizzed around a bend and just missed slamming into an overturned Belkin semi, skimmed by the cab of the truck with a coat of paint to spare. Kid never turned a hair. No sense being around a bush. I guess we're going to the same place. I guess you've been getting dreams about that boogeyman in a black flight suit. Am I right? You mean the priest, yeah? Spooky, ain't he? But he don't scare me. He's a hard baby. But the kids handled hard babies before. I shut him up. Then I shut him down. You know what I'm gonna do after we get west? I'm gonna lay low for a while. Check out the situation. Check out the big man, happy crappy. And then, then, what? We're gonna shut him down, send him around Dead Man's Curve, put him out the pasture and take over. You stick with me, trash man, or whatever you call yourself. We're gonna eat more chicken than any man ever seen. Trash and the kid checked into adjoining rooms in a motel in Golden, Colorado. Kid, drunk on warm cores, was in a mood. No electricity, no TV, I hate that. I love it that all shitheads got wasted, but where's my HBO? Where's my Playboy channel? Where's... You dumb dork. You done spilt your Coors beer. I'd piss Coors beer if I could. And do you think they're making any more Coors beers these days, Trash? No, I guess not. 
You're damn right. It's a endangered species. I'm gonna ventilate your thinking machine for your being so wasteful. You believe that happy crappy? Trash can man did. He thought it was the end of his life, for sure. I'll tell you what, Trash. You get you another can of course, and you chug it. You chug the whole thing. I won't send you to the Cadillac Ranch. Go on, every drop. And if you puke it back up, you a gone goose. Warm beer gurgled out into Trashy's throat. He swallowed convulsively and swallowed and swallowed. When the can was empty, after a seemingly endless battle with his gorge, Trashy won his life back in one long... <laughs> <laughs> okay, not bad, trash can man. Not too damn shabby. Trashy was in his room, making his plans. He would wait until the little monster had succumbed to sleep, and then he would slip away. He'd had enough. And what the kid had said about the dark priest, saying things like that, even if you were joking, was like holding your face up to a thunderstorm and begging the lightning to come hit. Hey, the kid... A lot drunk. We, we ain't, we ain't done by a long shot yet. I know what you like. I knew it the first time I looked at you. Trash can man suspected what was coming next. He suspected it from his long nights in the stir. And as it happens, Trashy was right. Mercifully, after it was over, after the kid had finished his business, sleep came. And with sleep, the dream. He was on a dark road, and very high. Don't worry. I will give you a sign. I will show you what happens to those who set themselves against me. Wait and watch, my good and faithful servant. Hey, puss bag. Wake up. We got us a big day ahead. A lot of stuff gonna happen today, am I right? My life for yours. Sure hope you are. I don't... I don't believe it. I don't even believe it. Get out of my road. You're all dead. Y'all belong in the boneyard. You got no business on my effing road. Colorado Rocky Mountain High, trash can man thought. I've seen it raining Chevys in the sky. And then he giggled. <laughs> That's it. I'm gonna kill you, trashy. I'm gonna take your life. But first, first you're gonna clear this mess for me. C clear all of I'm not leaving my car. No way. No how. You get to pushing, Trashy. You push fast enough or maybe I won't blow your brains out. You believe that, Happy Crappy? Trashy offered up a silent prayer to the dark man. Come on, you wood in dummy. Get your back in it. Pain flared in Trashy's recently burned arm. He knew that the fragile tissue would soon rip. The pain would become agony. An impossible task. The kid would get bored soon, and then... What the hell was that? I, I didn't hear anything. Who's there? You better answer me or I'll start shooting. The kid was answered, but not by a human voice. By a howl that rose up like a hoarse siren. First climbing, then dropping into a guttural growl. They were coming down the slope on the far side of the turnpike and crossing the median. The kid emptied his 45s, but only dropped three wolves. Three of two dozen? More? Their eyes, Trashy thought. They had the eyes of their master and his master. The kid just made it into the Austin before the wolves pounced on him. But that was all right. They could wait forever. Then one of the wolves was licking Trashy's burned hand. My life for you. The kid's face was a small white moon staring at him in disbelief. Trashy responded the only sane way. You're shut down, do you hear me? Do you believe that happy crappy? Shut down. Don't tell me. I'll tell you. That was it for the kid. The dark man's lapdogs would wait until he starved to death. Until he got crazy enough to try and make a run for it. The wolf was gently tugging Trash Can's good hand now. Tugging him west. All right. Okay, boy. Let's go. By the time Trash Can Man made it through the Eisenhower Tunnel, his gray ghostly guardians had faded away. Almost evaporated. But it didn't matter. He had seen the dark man's hand at work, and had seen it plain, and he was too exalted to do anything but pray and keep moving. 
The beauty of religious mania is that it has the power to explain everything. Which is perhaps why, and how, Trashy spent 20 minutes talking to a crow on the road west of Vale, convinced it was an emissary of the Dark Man, or the Dark Man himself. By late July, Trashy was speeding across western Utah on the I-15, which runs all the way to San Bernardino. And when the front wheel of his bike parted company from the rest of the machine, and Trashy was pitched over the handlebars and split his head open, he kept walking, kept shuffling. Cibola, my life for you. Cibola, bump de bump de bump. And so it was almost dawn on the morning of August 5th when Trash Can Man, once Donald Merwin Elbert, entered Cibola, otherwise known as Vegas, missing a shoe he'd lost somewhere in the desert. He saw many things. He didn't stop until he reached the MGM Grand Hotel. Or more specifically, the working fountain in front of the hotel. He could feel the pores of his body open up like a million mouths and slurp the water in like a sponge. Cibola! Cibola, my life for yours! He dog paddled around the fountain and drank until he was sloshing around like a filled goat skin. It had been worth it. It had all been... Trash fell instantly asleep and was soon surrounded by a trio of men. What do we do with them? Let him sleep. Flag wants him. Yeah? Where the hell is Flag anyway? You that anxious to see him, heck? N no. Hey, Lloyd? You know I didn't. Sure. I know you didn't. Flag will be around soon. He's been waiting for this guy. This guy. He's something special. On the grass, oblivious to all this, Trash Can Man slept on. Thank you so much for watching. I know that there's an adamant, loyal fan base for this series. There's only two volumes left in this series, with five issues in each volume, so we've only got ten left for the major long play. Don't forget to hit that like and hit that subscribe button to keep up with all the updates and all the future uploads for this channel. It really helps the algorithm. Thank you guys for watching. Till the next one.